Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Doosh! Smile to Jannah. <laughs> we live in a society where relationships are promoted as unions which rely on going out or buying things. This makes businesses more money and is a quick fix for people that don't have much time on their hands. They're too busy at work. Bored at home? Just go for dinner. Don't look at the fact that you can't seem to stay in each other's company for more than a couple of hours. Know that you don't really have much in common or you're working unreasonable hours. Let's just go on holiday. And now with the lockdown and social distancing, you're forced to interact with each other's personalities and that's where problems are now emerging. You don't care. I don't care. No, you don't. And what do we do? We jump to what's familiar to us and that is divorce, breakup. Why? No. Why not? I mean, let's be frank here. Yeah. Patience is not a characteristic which is being cultivated by our society. I mean, with the likes of fast food, fast deliveries, fast track courses, fast internet and fast technology, I mean you name it. We're not exactly given loads of opportunities to show and exemplify our patience or even cultivate it. Well, why do we resort to breaking up so quickly? Well, let's look at our life. What do we normally do when we don't like something? In college, you don't like a subject, you drop it. WhatsApp, if you got a problem with someone, just block them. On social media, you got a problem with your face, face tuning, Photoshop, yeah, edit out the blemishes, add a filter, boom, done. And you know what? It's not exactly our fault because we are immersed in choices and options. We've got thousands of options for TV shows, movies, music. If we don't like a particular movie, we just move on to the next one. Even when we go to the shops, we want to buy cereal. There's like 20 different types of cereal. Ketchup. There's like 20 different types of ketchup. So even in our daily lives, we are not taught commitment. So how are we suddenly going to start applying that to our relationships when, let's be frank, we haven't been given training in relationships other than romantic comedies and pornography. What talk is there of relationships? Other than what dad says five minutes before the game starts or what mum says when she's in the middle of cooking the next curry. So this alongside the belief that the grass will be greener on the other side. Oh she doesn't understand me or she does this. You know what? I could probably find someone that doesn't. You know what? You may be right or you may be wrong. And it's this you may be wrong that's the problem because if you are wrong you're going to have to live with the regret your entire life and that is not something you can just shake off. So what am I suggesting? I'm suggesting exhaust all your means before even considering a breakup and that doesn't mean speaking to your family who are clearly biased and may even be projecting their own issues of their relationships onto you. Seek an outsider but an outsider who knows what they're talking about, such as a couple's therapist or a couple's counsellor. And then follow it up with marriage classes and study circles on marriage as well. And when you have exhausted all these options and it is still not working out, then you can say, maybe it's not meant to be. Yeah? Don't start using taqdeer and saying it's just not meant to be when you haven't exhausted all the options. Yeah? Do your best. Remember this saying, do your best then Allah will do the rest. You have to exhaust your means and then if things don't work out and then maybe a couple of months down the line regret starts creeping in, you can tell yourself, you know what, I did my best to make it work. I did my best and you have genuinely done your best, then you can say it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. Allah did not will for it to be because you tried everything you could. It is not your fault and that is the best medicine to get over a breakup. Knowing that you have done everything and anything that was in your power and control. In psychology, the fundamental attribution error. What? Zishan, what are you talking about mate? Will you be taking psychology classes? Why are you using big words bruv? Just stick to roasting the Indian media and making these cringy jokes. All right, I, I, I will, but <laughs> hear me out yeah. When you do something wrong, 
you blame it on external reasons. Yeah, it could be our oh, uh, traffic lights weren't working or my alarm clock didn't work. In other words, external things. But when somebody else does something, you blame it on internal characteristics. Yeah, you go deeper. You blame it on inherent characteristics and behavioral behavioral issues. For example, you'd say, you know what? That person's careless in nature. They're undisciplined. They're not punctual. And this is what happens in relationships. When things go wrong, you blame the internal nature of the person. But you are not looking at other things. It could be suppressed trauma. It could be suppressed emotions. But you're just blaming the person without taking the time to look into the reason why these issues could have happened. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, how am I supposed to know, mate? I'm not a therapist. Exactly my point. You need to go to somebody together so they can get to the bottom of it. Help the person. And in return, you're helping yourself and you're helping your kids. Just ending the relationship and breaking your home is not what you should be jumping to straight away. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope this has got you thinking and inshallah even saves your marriage. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.